Films with Singapore involvement had a good showing at this year's Cannes Film Festival. Two out of three on show winning awards. <laughs> Malaysian horror movie Tiger Stripes picked up the Critics Week Grand Prize, the first ever Southeast Asian film to take this award. Meantime, inside the yellow cocoon shell won the camera door. The award recognizes excellence in a filmmaker's first feature. Anthony Chen's The Breaking Ice, however, failed to pick up an award this time around. Now for more, we're joined by Justin Ang, Assistant Chief Executive at the Infocom Media Development Authority, and Jeremy Chua, producer of Tiger Stripes. Um, first to you, Jeremy. Now, you've scored an absolutely amazing win. Where does the film's trajectory go from here? Uh, actually, I'm the producer of Inside the Yellow Cocoon Shell. It's uh, the Vietnamese film that won the camera door. Apologies um, for that. the film has had a really, yeah, we had a really good premiere and a good market as well. Uh, because of the price and because I think of the very specific aesthetical and cinematographic nature of the film, uh, we had a lot of interest from international film festivals. Uh, we're going next to festivals like Color Vivari, San Sebastian, Melbourne. So we are trying to bring it to as many festivals around the world. Uh, we also sold to several territories like in France, in Greece, in the US. So we're looking forward to um, yeah, ex expanding the market of this film around the world. Justin, let's get to you now. Uh, we've had about 20 years of showcasing films at Cannes. Uh, talk to us about the value of collaborative partnerships, though, with international media players over the years. Yeah, well, I think as we've seen throughout the years, um, it's been vital for Singapore filmmakers to really get access uh, to regional and international collaborations so that the creativity that they then spark together really help uplift the quality of the productions and then eventually finds you know, regional and global audiences who will be able to enjoy their content and so that's something that we've been focusing on uh, for the last few years. And I think what we've seen at Cannes is testament to how that strategy has worked really well. And people like Jeremy and others really being able to, you know, take their talent and their content much further. Uh, Jeremy, I guess the fact is that content grants are a much needed source still of financial support for emerging filmmakers like yourself. How long do you anticipate before uh, you are able to produce without relying on this kind of help? Uh, I think for international uh, or rather for projects that are looking for international markets, uh, they're not so reliant on domestic commercial kind of outcomes. Um, these kind of films tend to tend to rely a lot on soft financing because they are not as uh, market centric. But I don't think that means that they are of less value um, to the audience. I think what's beautiful about also these kind of prizes internationally it just reminds uh, us, our community, that internationally um, there is a lot of people interested about our region, our stories, our kind of aesthetical value, our our treatment towards sight and sound. How do we respond to this from our way of life and our culture? And that's also worth uh, preserving. That's worth um, yeah supporting financially uh, from the commissional point of view. Mm. Nonetheless, it does cost quite a bit to get these films funded. Uh, to be able to get what you need for this creative process. Justin, you know, these content grants, they are a catalyst for independent filmmakers uh, in the region. Give us a sense of how keen the interest is in to actually applying for them, uh, to get them. How hard is it to get them? And do you anticipate that there's going to be some growth, especially when we see wins like this at Cannes? No, certainly. In the past, you know, we were very focused on made in Singapore productions. Uh, but then, of course, very soon we learned and knew that we had to fish in a much larger caption, which is when, you know, several years ago, we started to focus on Southeast Asia co-productions. And the selection process is highly competitive. 
You know, every year there are several call for proposals of which we put together, uh, you know, a panel that is filled with uh, producers, uh, programmers, filmmakers uh, globally to help pick proposals that we think are really going to be able to secure our talent and their capability within these projects, as well as help these projects make their mark on the global stage. And really, you know, with two of the, the films this time around, Inside the Yellow Cocoon Shell and Tiger Stripes, you know, they were picked from these panels uh, several years ago, which have finally, you know, come to light and really won over audiences all around the world. So when a film premieres at Cannes, it does allow an international audience and critics to see uh, highly acclaimed Made in SG films, but how far does it lead to really boosting the region's film appetite for uh, the Southeast Asian flavour? And I could put that question to, to Jeremy. Uh, I think for like a traditional, like everyday audience, it's not something you ordinarily swallow uh, as like, I think normally audiences look for entertainment films, we look for films that are like social events. But I think more and more there is a growing, um, I think especially in a post-COVID like society whereby we, we are talking more about our way of life and how our reality is a bit different from how we lived before. I think films are a way that allows us to reflect on this in a more public uh, daily culture kind of space. I do think that the more kind of diversity of cinema is being able to be shown in the cinemas, the more people can get more engaged with how we live our life and how we relate to other people and other people around the world. So I think although we don't know it yet, we, we need it for ourselves. Yeah. Uh, we want to thank you so much, uh, both of you, for joining us. Thank you to Justin Nung from IMDA. And apologies and thanks to Jeremy, to our producer of uh, Feature Film. Uh, 